Oh, good to see you, Charles. It's so good to see you. We're going to be talking about the old days and all of that. And to the people in the audience, welcome. Welcome very much to Conversations. Have as a guest an old, old, old dear friend of mine. His name is Charles Fernandez. We've known each other for decades. And uh, he's also been, for some period of time, more recently, uh, production uh, director at the Tobin, Tobin Studios. And uh, he's a really interesting fellow, one of the brightest people I've ever run into in my life. And Charles, welcome very, very much to Conversations on June 10th of the year 2010. It's a pleasure to be here. It's Howard. always good much. to see you, uh, Charles. We got a lot of stories we can tell. Charles, let me just get a couple things done at the outset. This is uh, this program will air on June 17th. I want to get a couple notices in quick, then we want to get into talking with you. But on this very day that you're viewing this program in the audience, the 17th of uh, June. Uh, uh, Reed Stowe, who is one of our gang uh, of artists and so forth, will be coming after 1,152 days solo on his own uh, schooner that he handcrafted lovingly when he was a young man and has lived on and sailed on uh, for these many decades. Will have return. Will be returning to New York after having been on the oceans of the world for 1,152 days without any connection or sight of land or resupply. He set a monumental record uh, in terms of that. It's like a biosphere on the oceans of the world. He's got a great ecological sense. And we want to remind you, this program is starting at 11 o'clock. At about 1 o'clock this very afternoon that the program airs, he will be sailing up the Hudson River with a flotilla of ship of uh, boats and he will be docking at Pier 81 at 42nd Street and the Hudson River. And we want to be, have people be aware of that. One other thing is, on the 19th of June, uh, the Saturday, uh, there's going to be a memorial service held up in the uh, Woodstock area of New York at New Paltz, New York, for a genius friend of ours, uh, Frank Patricolo, who unfortunately passed in September of last year, he was part of a comedy team. I was just asking Charles uh, of Poets. I don't know of any team that was ever intellectually, poetically, in touch with the human condition in a witty, funny, and really revealing way than the team that these two fellas formed Cut. called Gee. Null and Void. You're Make playing it much too soon. Null and Void. And um, there's going to be a memorial service on the 19th of June. Two little announcements about things going on in the in the community. We'll get back to that a little bit. But with that said, Charles, welcome so much to Conversations and to Manhattan Network. Thank you very much. Talk right about now, they're, they're playing. Uh, it's all right. It'll be all right. They're It'll playing right. a DVD that yeah, I made. Yeah, they were just queuing it up. Uh, are you queuing it up or are you playing it? No, up they're there? they're thing. Anyway, so welcome. I'm glad to yourself. be here. Talk about yourself just a little bit. Well, Anchor this is the third time I've been on the program. Right. But, okay. Uh, in the interim, I've been like. Continued to produce and direct at Tobin Productions. Yeah, uh, make DVDs and a variety of things. And one of the programs that I'm um, that I'm most happy with uh, is a, a program about lead paint poisoning. Yeah, in the I city. remember you did that. Twelve yeah. years ago, uh -huh. uh, there were there were uh, ten thousand cases a year in New York. Yeah, and they brought it down to four thousand, and then we made this this DVD mm -hmm. uh, and a song, which public service song, sung by Wu-Tang Clan, yeah, uh -huh. and they now have it down to 1,500 a year. Uh -huh. And uh, that's a significant improvement because the people affected by lead paint poisoning yeah. uh, suffer their entire life, and they're all young children. Right, And it right. costs a ton of money to support Congratulations them. Congratulations on having helped well, affect society. Well, I'm a, society, a speck though. in the effort against yeah, this. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, at yeah. best a speck. But I wrote and produced this song yeah. uh, with the help of Dorian Chandler, who uh -huh. had the connection with uh, with uh, Wu Tang Clan, yeah, uh -huh. but uh, I actually wrote the rap that uh -huh. they did, the but the spoken word rap, yeah, uh, which probably makes me the uh, oldest, fattest, whitest uh, <laughs> rap, rap songwriter <laughs> right. in the country. Right, right, uh, right, right. Maybe you could play it now. Yeah, well, if you'd like, we it. can. We can set that up. And then, and you, he's been doing this production after a long time. We're going to reminisce a bit about back in New Paltz, upstate, and so forth later. But let's play that. He's put that song, and that it's the thing. I saw somebody talking about Rene. Boy, I think it was uh, Pete Seeger, and he said that he went with Rennie Du Bois, and Rennie Du Bois said, "Okay." Okay. 
blood, so make it less safe. You know it's no good. No good. Para mis hijos, let's make it less safe. Para mis hijas, let's make it less safe. And the rest of the neighborhood, let's make it less safe. So let's make it less safe. Come on. And if the landlord stores, don't shout. Just call 311 and ask for HPD. And they'll send some help out. So let's make it let's safe. And that's the uh, and that's the song. That's really good. That's the rap. It, and and it yeah, was yeah. it's somewhat inspired mm -hmm. in me mm -hmm. by my early association with Francesco Patricola. Oh right. The and with of course with uh, Mikhail Horowitz Mikhail too. Horowitz. No Genuine, and Boyd. Yeah, Null and Void. And that was back in team. the in the early seventies. Mm -hmm. They were rapping. Yeah, yeah. And well, actually earlier than that, but they were well before rap became. Um, a uh, uh, staple yeah, of right. uh, music uh -huh. well before uh, Hammer and the others the other yeah, early ones yeah. they were they were going back to an earlier tradition back to the back to the 20s and the 10s which were called signifying yeah, right. and and with Lord Buckley in the mm. in the 40s yeah, right. and uh, they picked up on that and uh -huh. uh, were wrapping the classics of Western civilization. Yes, at the time, right. That's from, right. From um, Ulysses, uh, yeah. from the Iliad and the Odyssey to Moby Dick. And Michael Dick, Dick, Moby Dick, the biggest yeah, Dick. Right, the right. And with great humor yes. and really poetic and genius quality of uh, intellectual input to uh, getting things across and everything mm -hmm. like. They absolutely, you have no problem. Here, I'll hold that up. You'll hold that up because this, is, uh, this, this goes. Is, this is a program that I did with them at the Academy Theater in New Paltz in 1975. Okay, let's see. I'm going to give you plenty of time to come in on this if you can. This is a flyer that has been lovingly preserved by Charles and it uh, goes back to 1975 which is way back in the middle of the uh, the whole thing going on in the 70s and it's Null and Void is the name of their comedy team. Uh, well, I wouldn't call it com comedy Comedy actually. team, they were poetic but they, it was so intelligent and I don't think I know of anybody that was any team that was more attuned to the times and poetic and intelligent than null and void. They were absolute genius quality. They were just beautiful and funny beyond all belief, but also great, uh, carrying great message and so forth. And it was made up of Frank Patricolo and also uh, uh, Mikhail, Mikhail Horowitz. Horowitz. Mikhail Horowitz carries on. He's very, very well known in New York. He opens for Ma Amy Goodman, a lot of other people now. But he's not particularly one who's particularly interested in finding fame and fortune and that sort of thing. He's a real honest to God poet, and as the Jewish people say, he's a real mensch, he's a real gentleman. But this was at the Academy Theater that you were involved with up there. That yeah, was, was a, a part place owner to show. The theater. That's where we sh used to show regularly, uh, what was the one about? King of Hearts. The King of Hearts, yeah. But anyway, Frank did this bit, uh, Signifying Monkey, which yeah. went back uh, to forever in African folklore tradition. Yeah. Frank grew up in uh, East Harlem. Right, 106th Street, I think. 16th Street. And was it well, okay, anyway, somewhere yeah. up in East yeah. Harlem, I wanted, and, okay. and and he um, he had his own way about him, yeah. and and he had a great pride in in, in racial harmony between the, the, oh, the yeah. Italians and the African Americans who lived in that area at that time, yeah. sixty uh, three years ago or so. Yeah, right. And in fact, I met Frank uh -huh. at that what was we called him in a class, mm -hmm. African history class, Carlton Mabey's African history class. Oh, Carlton Mabey up in yeah, New Paltz. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. teaching He used to call him there. Pretty Baby, Carlton <laughs> Mabey. He must have been a <laughs> yeah, right, right. pretty baby, yeah, Carlton Mabey. Yeah. But anyway, Carlton had a way of emphasizing the, the white man's burden in Africa yeah. a little too much. And yeah. Frank, who kept copious notes, though, most of them were not about necessarily about the class. They were ideas that were coming through yes, his head. He, he had he, a 700 he, books with, uh, with sayings absolutely. and things that he kept track but of. But he would not mm. let Carlton maybe falsify or not falsify, but, mm. but directed solely white man's burden in yeah. Africa. And yeah. he had all this information. Yeah. He was challenging him constantly. Yeah. Uh -huh. I doubt he could have possibly passed that question. <laughs> yeah, that's he, right. He put uh, pretty yeah. maybe Carlton maybe to the mm. to the to the test. Yeah, right, right, right. And uh, and I and I think. You know. Anyway, he did it his way. Uh -huh. He was so self-confident and yeah. so secure in yeah. himself uh -huh. that he was willing to do that and disrupt the class. Yeah, he, lived, he used to live out in Philly. You remember, he had that place out in Philly's yeah, Bridge Road. That's a town outside of New Paltz. New Paltz is sister community to Woodstock and that sort of thing. And he had that thing at the end of Philly's Bridge Road. It's now owned by Robert De Niro. It is now the home of Robert De Niro. De Niro saw a good piece of property, but he had it with the dog Madrigore and, uh, and so forth. Well, it was at and the end of a dead end road, and, and, and 
and they've right now down on the sealed that road off a quarter mile up the road yes, to protect could, Robert De Niro. Well, right. Needless to say that yeah. the structures that Frank and, and I shared with him lived mm -hmm. in are no longer there. They yeah. were destroyed. They had a chicken coop. Yeah, it was yeah. A redone chicken coops and things like that. Those are the good old days. I, I want to say all parenthetically for those viewing on here the 17th, uh, we're going to be playing a program tomorrow that Carlos just helped me put some DVDs together about, which is an interview I did with Frank a number of years back, mm -hmm. and that's going to be aired tomorrow. That would be the 18th of June, so you might want to tune in to get a fix on this fellow who is a legendary figure in the uh, in the realm of, uh, of artistic expression, poetic yeah. expression. He also later, in, intellectual later in life he got his PhD and he was a psychologist. Yep, yep. And uh, he, he had a practice for uh, couples in open marriages. He was uh, an expert in that. Well, yeah. Really 1960s, 70s stuff. He stayed with it. He was true to himself. It's he was really true hard to his ideas. To, 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 he was really there yeah. for his entire life. And then he continued to perform and use his performance as therapy. Yeah, well, he, yes, that's right. He had theaters, right. uh, he had theaters uh, therapy. And he and Michael used to open for Monk, Theolonius Monk, well, that and, was, and other people like that. He was very hip, and they were very yeah. together. Frank, I have another Frank, story about mm -hmm. you and Frank as mm -hmm. well that I like to tell quickly, yeah. and that was when he came to New York to debut his uh, Bopaganda album and some of his blues that he was working on right. at the time. And you yeah. had a salon, mm -hmm. and, and uh, he came, and he had uh, Berardi and some others. Michael Berardi came with Michael's backup, coming in from San Francisco. Came with a backup right? group yeah. of really fine blues musicians. Oh, yeah. And now, let yeah. me tell the story because okay, please. tell the story. And Frank, who God bless him, he was he was top of it. He was he had really it, out of yeah. But he was not a great blues singer, in my okay. opinion. Okay. In many yeah. people's opinion. Yeah. And <laughs> I thought he murdered the blues song. Okay. You know, okay. I, I was wincing actually. Yeah. Uh -huh. But in the audience was mm. Ornette Coleman. Ornette Coleman, who's a, a neighbor of yours and a friend of yours. Lives right? in the building. Yeah. He so came and the the famous you know dissident jazz, free jazz proponent who's trying to shape music for all times to come. Absolutely. And he sat oh, there, yeah. and he sat there and listened to it, and he said, at the end, he made his pronouncement, mm -hmm. he said that, Frank, you've discovered a new meaning in blues, no. and, and a new, you've got a new understanding and a new sensibility, and, right. and he yeah. loved it. Yeah. So who yeah. am I to say that Frank can't? He also it. gave him good advice. He, 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 Ornette was listening, and uh, Ornette's really funny. He's got a great, and he's a great. He won the Pulitzer. I don't yes. know if you realize that just recently, as well as having been made a, a genius. And that's only two jazz men have ever done, Mar as Marcellus and and Ornette. But he also uh, listened to the music thing, and he said you got to have some more French horns. So he gave him a feeling on how to uh, 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 increase the value of the music score behind the thing that he was doing. Beautiful guy. Beautiful guy. But anyway, guy. the fact that he could write, the, 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 they were writing raps and writing these songs really mm -hmm. inspired me to write, you know, 30 years later to write the uh, lead paint. Oh, it was off, uh, off that. Mm -hmm. Bopaganda, he called it. You know, bop. Prop propaganda and bop, uh, bop music and that. Yeah. Very hip guy, and he was raised on a... And, and the program will air tomorrow with him, a whole hour Sorry. talking about his early what, From experience. about 10 years ago. And what we want to do is celebrate some of the leading edge artists who may not have been famous, as it were, in that sort of thing. And it comes off your lead thing in my way of thinking, too, because I just saw, I forget where, I think it was a, a, a thing on public television with Pete Seeger. He was talking about Rene Dubois he had met with. Mm -hmm. And Rene Dubois had it cottoned on to the idea of think globally and act locally. When they got the idea of the clear water, everybody said it couldn't be done. But it's the little things that the, uh, uh, an individual can do things. It's not all just great big government program or bureaucracy or something where things can be done. And an individual, the role for an individual, or maybe the entrepreneurial spirit even, particularly artistically, is something that ought to be celebrated. Yeah, that falls, falls into within my... Uh political philosophy, yeah, okay. which is somewhat oxymoronic. <laughs> if I'm not oxymoronic, I'm at least a party oxymoronic. called the Oxymoronics. Party, yes, because yeah. I consider myself a left libertarian. Left libertarian. Yes. Now, Some everybody that's thinks of libertarians term. as, uh, you know, right wing, basically. Uh, but I consider myself a left, and I have my own definition for it, basically. And I'm Given. hoping that there's other people out there. Because it's not just government, big government that's beyond the, the, the scope of humans. Yes, but it's the corporations are just as large. <coughs> oh, yeah. Larger. Be, uh, 
British Petroleum, BP, yeah, is all much larger than most countries in the world. Yeah, right. They dwarf yeah, yeah. GP in, right. in, in, in their revenues, right. the, the, uh, the, the GP of, other, of most countries in the world. So, right. uh, and they have over their workers and over, over their environment and over their people, and, and a thousand other corporations as well have more influence than government in many ways. Yeah. And it's far beyond the scope of individuals to deal with. That's absolutely true. That's and, important. And I think that falls somewhat into your philosophy well. As well, I think so, yeah. Well, I like Fuller. You know, Fuller's my main man. He was an artistic, uh, you know, outlaw, you might say, yeah. and uh, that kind of thing. And the creative people are sort of outside the paradigm that's accepted by most and everything. And that's where the ideas, the new ideas, or yeah. paradigm, paradigmatic, so. uh, significant ideas come from, from the uh, work of uh, individuals and... Yeah, it, doesn't you take, it doesn't take an international corporation to make a hamburger. That's right, and you put that song together yourself, and you were inspired by things, and you put it together, and it had a major effect in terms of getting rid of a very dis a thing that was no. very ill-affecting no, no, no. the people of the... I had a teeny the little influence within a bigger movement to to uh, raise, raise awareness of lead paint poisoning in children. That's a metaphor. Children, children take the dust and, and put it in their mouths. They put yeah, it in I know, toys. it's terrible. Right, and, and the reality is there's lead paint every place yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in New York. What I'm trying to get at, Charles, is that the individual can have a difference. They can have a say. The thing is they can intimidate and, uh, and, and silence uh, through the uh, propaganda and the, the machines that the media control and everything there, they can get the people to where they will just be silent and let things go yeah, and, that's and do anything at all in order to be and able I think to get a little trend towards heat. that. The recent yeah. Supreme Court ruling that was awful. That Supreme Court uh, ruling that that corporations have the same rights as everybody else as mm. humans. And which I totally dispute. Just Corporations, by their nature, are limited liability. Yeah, that's why they incorporate. So, right, right, right. And and so you limit your your responsibility. You yeah. limit your liability. You limit your responsibility. Mm -hmm. I think you should limit your rights as well. Mm -hmm. I can't limit my responsibility if I mm -hmm. do something bad. I'm responsible. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. I'm not a limited. It's not only government. Picture. It's not only government that can be oppressive, and you want to guard against that from the Constitution on, and so forth. You want to guard against oppressive uh, a, a, a concentration of total control in the government of a situation, the kings of England and that sort of thing, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's also the corporate entities that have inordinate the, the control of, over the way you're the going to live your Street. life. That's right, and it's just as important to have a. To ride herd on that yeah. is it that's is why, the government. Yeah. That's why now that I'm I'm, I'm retiring from. You're Tobin. going to retire from yeah, Tobin. You've been there about what? How long? Uh, about 15, 16 about 15, years, 15, and then I had years. my own company for the equal amount of time, and I freelanced before that. Yeah, you did. Doing productions, DVDs. A lot of people recently. in this audience that's viewing will be familiar with Tobin because uh, filmmakers, independent filmmakers, videographers, uh, people get acquisition footage or do their mm -hmm. own thing. Including will know you. Tobin, including myself. Yeah, uh, will know you because you were you you. you You've been an institution uh, within that realm. Yeah, Dwight oh, Tobin, the principal there, has been around Dwight. forever. He knows everybody. Yeah, yeah he knows Good everybody. Guy. Another guy used to be Rafiq, used to be around. Did don't, you know? Dwight, don't talk about her. You don't want to talk no, about Rafiq? Oh, they're not competition. No. Oh, they're okay. well, he passed. But, but anyway, onward, yeah. uh, you oh. know, from. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about? Well, we were talking about Charles Fernandez and also oh, Mike yes. uh, from. Um, That's me. Uh, Francisco Patricolo and that sort of thing and celebrating that. And also the fact that we know each other. We go back 40 years, I guess, right? Uh, go back, more than 40, 42 68. years. We met in a saloon watching the election returns of Richard Nixon and Hubert Humphrey, 1968, when That's I had arrived from and California. We've been, have and we've been, been debating things cash, we've been for debating the entire. Every, Time. Yeah, we've been going, and that was still, and I'm going to say it, it's going to not make much sense to anybody, and I'm not going to try and defend it or anything, but it's of my opinion, for whatever it's worth, I believe if we go out a thousand years from now into the future, if we make it and don't join entropy and destroy the species, that we are, it's going to be measured. Frank has a great riff about how 1957 is a, is a brand, you know, like the Christian era, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But I think it's going to be remembered as a kind of year one. And the year one that's most a candidate can be made for, particularly out of artistic circles, is about the year 1970. I, I, I believe Which that. Which makes there us were the transformations 40th year, going on. 40th anniversary this year. That's right. And, and from my way of, of thinking, the, of, yeah, in the well, autumn. Let me was, tell you. You've, it was Frank and I out on that farm where now uh, uh, Robert De Niro, De Niro walks around when we had this uh, epiphany and so forth in, in October 12th of 1912. He was with me in Madrigore. 19. 
1970. 70. I'm sorry, 1970. And there were things going on. You're not on. that old, Harold. Um, well, I'm older than I think I'd like to be. But anyway, uh, but we're talking. So we're going back to that period, and I would mm -hmm. mark that period, 1970. I think it's going to come back. You could call it the spirit of Woodstock. You could call it of what was blowing in the wind, Bobby Dylan, and so forth. I but think there've that's there've going to be been resurrected. There've multiple generational shifts since then, if you think about it. Yeah. And things have changed in many different ways, and we can talk about that in a few minutes. But I wanted to go back okay, to, go to back. where we were in Wall Street when, okay. I, when uh, in your inimitable way, we got off on another tangent. Well, it's all right. It's but, all interconnected. But yeah. I'm, another thing that I'm doing now in my semi-retirement, because I'm yeah. still doing some projects at Tony, right, right. is that I'm working for uh, Richard Brodsky, oh, to, who's running for, General. Uh, running for Attorney General. You know, yeah. And, and mm -hmm. I'm telling you, this guy has uh, got the smarts, and, he, and the most important thing, the independence. He's nobody's lackey. Uh -huh. And uh, hopefully uh, Cuomo's governor, but he needs, he's going to need somebody to stand up to even him uh -huh. as Attorney General, and he won't let Wall Street honchos or anybody else push uh, uh, push him around. He's uh, got a tremendous integrity. You're going to send me some literature about the dude, right? Yeah, okay. Richard you're Brodsky. Put me in touch yeah, I'd love to do I'm a program. Do some video Let people for him, right? Yeah. On pro bono basis I'd also and support say, his candidacy. So I'm okay. doing that. And the Good. other thing I'm doing uh, is he a friend or are you just well? Come I've known him, him for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he's his, he's yeah. his own guy. I've known him a long time, yeah. like you, even longer yeah. than you. Longer than yeah, me? Like I didn't politics. know you know anybody well, longer than me. Yeah. Well, we were in high school together. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. You and another high school friend is. Peter yeah. Riegert, who's yeah, been on your show, actor, yeah. and I've been working with him. He's uh, doing a series of uh, short films. The first one mm -hmm. uh, was um, nominated for an Academy Award. Mm -hmm. We thought he was going to win, but he didn't. Is that the one? With it was his called Buy Buy Courier. It was called, uh -huh. and basically, it's about language and about yeah. the use of language. This was right. a Henry James story, uh -huh. and. Um, and it was uh, two people with a misunderstanding, and a young, and they were upper class uh, Queen's English, King's English types. And uh, the courier was a street kid from 1905 who sort of interpreted in street language. It would uh -huh. be very appropriate to yeah, do yeah. it now. Nice guy. And this one he's Dude. doing now, uh, hopefully, is a David Ives play. Hopefully, he does it. Okay. And also, it's called the Universal Language. He's, he's making got, a film. Yeah, he's got yeah. this grand vision of, of the importance of language. Okay. Which uh, yeah. something that you also. Uh, I find very important. Michael certainly does. Yes, and, Mikhail and Horowitz, Horowitz yeah. is the, is the master genius. of the He's language. He's a genius, absolute yes. genius poet. Yeah, really yeah. good. Ginsburg, he was with and all that. Yeah, you know, I... Ray I, Bremser, yeah. yeah. I had a, I have a Michael Horowitz, Alan Ginsburg story, if you like, quickly. Do, by all means, yeah. yeah. Well, this was in the early 70s, mm -hmm. and we went to... He, he was very... We were both very young, and we went to a Ginsburg reading yeah. up uh, near Woodstock. Yeah. And at the end of the reading... Um, Ginsburg said, um, anybody driving back to New York, I could use a ride. Yeah. Whop. Yeah. Now, I wasn't going back to New York, but I had a car. I'm yeah. thinking two hours, three hours Maybe of Ginsburg. two hours with Ginsburg. With, yeah, right. So uh, Mick was with me, and yeah. we piloted Mick, the car. That would be Mikhail Horowitz. Mikhail yeah. Horowitz, yeah. Mm -hmm. We called him Michael in those days. He was beautiful. We've all changed sleep. names. Yeah. I've yeah. got four names, but that's what? another. Carlos. Well, Chuck, when I was growing Chuck? up. Chuck? Chuck, and Charles is my real name, and Carlos. Carlos, that's right. what you were known as Yeah, I knew Paul. So what's the other? And, 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 and and my life is like divided into yeah, well, file you, folders on a computer. And that's only three, I, I see, unless you Well, count. the other one was Chico, because it Chico. was Chico Fernandez yeah. who played for the Detroit Tigers, so oh. I played baseball. What year? Uh, in the late 50s, early 60s. Yeah, that was after my time. I knew all the Detroit, Detroit Tiger Tigers. players in 1945. Anyway, he was, yeah. he was the, one of the first Latin players with, yeah. the, for, with Fernandez. Oh, I see, Latin. Latin. Players, so I and, picked uh, up that moniker as a So you got the name uh, Fernandez anyway. and what? You must be a Polish, right? So the, yeah, I'm making Polish, a joke. Right. Yes. I'm making a joke. He's yes. from Italy. Actually, Southern got, Italy. I've got a you Lithuanian got grandmother. Yeah, you've also got some relatives. I am that a have Southerner there. too. And you've also got connections. I didn't even know you were reading, literally translating Spanish. No, Italian. I didn't know you Italian. I mean Italian. And you also know Spanish quite well. Spanish is. And I didn't know all both of learn languages. Yeah, I, I might be a Fernandez, but I learned it in school and by my travels to Spain and Mexico, South America, and recently. And you lived in more Bur recently. Um, more recently, the Dominican, Dominican Republic. Republic. You're yeah. going to be going there but soon, soon uh, on yeah. vacation. But you, yeah. um, but you were the and inspiration were in for my my mm. six or seven month trip to South America, to Peru and Bolivia. Yeah. When you did your doctorate down there, and yeah. the stories you told me, yeah. uh, combined with the my incredible interest in the uh, story of the uh, conquest, the conquistadors, and the and the, um, and the Quechua peoples, yeah. uh, the Walpa, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the bravest things ever done. The people crossed in little boats. They burned their boats after they... Cortez did, yeah, 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 yeah. Veracruz, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, uh, the conquistadors. They were incredible. Uh, and then went against a huge empire with 133 people, yeah. forces in a few 
blunderbusses. Like yeah. That. But in any case. And some blankets full of smallpox helped yeah. in the longer run and when the, they yes. did it. But they did. That didn't help in Peru. But more much. important than that, if I may, I take a second and everything. That place, the Aymara people, is a very in ancient Bolivia. culture. That's Bolivia. And I just spelled it out to you the other day. It's very significant because we've, we're 200,000 years, Homo sapiens been here. Life's been here 3.8 billion years. And so we've got an evolutionary process. And in that process, vast majority of the time, Homo sapien was wandering and gathering in a Paleolithic condition. Neolithic came eight, ten thousand years ago. We got agriculture, got civilization. Four main places where that developed, and it was based upon getting security from the food quest, mm -hmm. which was wheat and barley in the West. You had rice in China. You had maize in the Tehuacan yeah. Valley of uh, Mexico. Mm -hmm. And a fourth major Potatoes. complex was the High Potatoes. Highlands the high highlands of uh, Andean South America. Yeah, yeah. And the place where that was, to, they, they did that, they made that uh, transformation was on the, it was more than likely, maybe new things are coming out, but it was more than likely was uh, on the shores of Lake Titicaca, Titicaca in the Timonaca. country of today of Bolivia. Mm -hmm. And it was a people who went from being Paleolithic hunters to Neolithic agriculture to high civilization. And I believe that that pre-Tiwanaku civilization uh, extended their sway in happens with empires all the way to Venezuela. It was a foundational thing for the Andean South area. America, yeah. And it was the furthest eastward migration of humanity from Africa, where we all come, that went through that process. And so it's what would be called in sociological or anthropological terms, a cultural hearth of the highest order. It goes back 2,800 BC that they went through this process. And that's a unique process that had radiation and out from the source. And all you had to do is go to a market in Peru these yeah. days or Bolivia, yeah. and you'll, you'll go into the market and you'll see a thousand varieties or f hundreds of varieties of potatoes. There's little ones and big ones and black ones and brown ones and yellow By far, ones, I think gold ones and red ones. Unbelievable quantities and biodiversity, which we should try to maintain. Absolutely, no How about back to uh, well, no, but 2010? It, it, no, not, but just for a second on that, though, because it's worth it, because the, uh, by far, the, the, if not the, the, the second most significant export, the conquistadors, it was mercantile and all that, were after gold. Gold, God, and guns, They were germs. looking for gold, gods, yeah, they were looking uh, gold, and uh, there was that, that was a value and so forth, And but the, the most valuable in the cultural terms that came out of the uh, New World for as far as the rest of the world was probably maize. But the second close was the potato in terms of what was important in terms of that encounter between East and West. Yeah, you wouldn't think the vodka, the Russians would have been uh, well, would have that been, was would have long standing, but they didn't get it until they got it from South America. Well, the, the, the Western, again, we can talk about Western this Europe was more based on wheat out. and barley, even Mesopotamia. And we only have an hour program, unless you yeah. want to do a six hour well, program. Well, you bring up an interesting we'll thing. You, you, you bring up yeah, an interesting thing. It and it's all interrelated, and we're coming to a time of qualitative transformation. In terms there of we the go. Evolution. Now we're back to the transformation of the present. I think that. Do you think it is? Yeah, we you wanted me to talk about, about what's happening in media. Okay, as well. yes, you're in media. Yes, and I, I read the trades and, uh, and, and pay attention to things. I've been One thing I would while. announce, if I don't mind, on the 24th of uh, June, uh, Kurzweil, I think I sent it to you. Kurzweil is having an opening of his film at Sixth mm -hmm. Avenue yeah. here in New York. I'm uh, the it. singularity is, is yeah. here or the singularity is near. Qualitative transformation in the human condition coming out of his understanding of cyber. And I don't know anybody well, we within had cyber event. realms that don't respect him. We, we just had an event took place that uh, is so illustrative of what's happening uh, in media and in the transformation of the world. Talk. And this is right to your theory yeah. that starts with Buckminster Fuller and, uh, oh, he's and the best, continues yeah. on with McLuhan and information theory, and the med medium is a message, yeah. and Kelso in economics and Kurzweil in futuristic thoughts. Yeah. That's, and That's you add your own unique um, uh, part to this metaphysical well, concept of the future. Well, those are major people to draw but, upon. There's others, but, but yeah. But let's just take media for, for a second. Okay, do. And, and for years, for millennia, there was a glorification of war. All the paintings of the Middle East and, 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 and drawings and, and propaganda which showed battle scenes. Everybody was, was uh, heroic and victorious because yeah. the victors always made the uh, history. Made the, they made write the history, the history yeah. yeah. But 
things changed with photographs of Matthew Brady on the on the, on the battlefields of um, the Civil War yeah. showed people some yeah. of the carnage and horror yeah. right. and, and and this continued on for a while but then there was a, a reaction by Hollywood where where uh, the images were of John Wayne and and the Sands That's of Iwo Jima, Sergeant Stryker, Brady. Sergeant York great again great hero heroism and and stuff but then it changed a third or for the when? fifth time when? Well, it changed again in Vietnam, I think, where we had where yeah. we had we had television coverage of yeah. Vietnam, and television, again people yeah. were able to see what was actually going on in, yeah. in that morass that uh -huh. went on, which we could talk the about big money, forever. Yeah, yeah, we talk about mm. forever. And then the military responded by clamping down on any sort of uh, coverage of wars. You know, they embed people in Iraq and and stuff, but they kept them away from the action and, yeah. and from really imposing it. Yeah. But now we've had, and now we're to the present yeah. in. Two minutes, oh, which yeah. is pretty good. Yeah. But now we had a new thing happened ten days ago or so, when when the life? Turkish well, oh, oh, relief no, oh, sorry, for, yeah. for Hamas and mm. the um, and, mm. and the Gaza yeah. um, set off, mm -hmm. and when they got stopped mm -hmm. by the Israelis, which they knew was going to happen, the Israelis yeah. were not yeah. going to allow, uh, you know, Katusha rockets or whatever to get yeah. into, uh, which didn't seem to be any, but they they did what they had to do, but. They, but the, but the, they were ready for the Israelis. Mm -hmm. They were streaming live uh -huh. from the boats. You mean from the flotilla? Yes, it was going out live yeah, on sure. the internet. This program, as it airs in Manhattan, is going to be streamed live to the everywhere in the world. Yes, that well, wants they, to view. Yes, but All you, they needed is a URL, but you wait, but and you're there. But this was. Uh, they were, you know, this is a, a, a one-upsmanship on things like the videotape of Rodney King, which, which uh, remember the effect yes, that had, it had. huge, and, and so many events yeah. like that have happened. Right, right. There's one happening right now in the border where where they have video camera. Everybody's got a camera, right? Yeah, they're so all, I can all take over the my world. Camera and whoop, take your video of you, and everybody's got This program got will be streamed to webcams all over the world, but or, or all camcorder. of a sudden. Yeah. And this is very McLuhan-esque, which yeah. is right up. There's a, 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 a democratization mm -hmm. of media, which right. you never had before. Right. Thirty years ago, I could take my camera, go to the U.S. Open tennis tournament, walk right in. They thought I was media. Yeah, right. Interview the players. Yeah, now right? anybody can do it. Now, anybody, well, everybody's now you media. can't get in because, because, everybody's, because everybody's, media. everybody's got a camera. Everybody's media. Everybody. <laughs> Every, here comes everybody. So now, they, yeah. now, they, now you got to have the proper credentials yeah. and, uh -huh. and everything. Uh -huh. So there is that democratization of that which which if anything uh, on the on of your triad of of Fuller McLuhan and Kelso uh, mm. in the McLuhan area is the only one I see moving forward to your to your future where where uh, which if you think in economic terms is the, the democratization of of wealth based on increasing productivity and uh, and and the ability of people to change the way they look at work that they're no longer getting their sustenance from work and they're no longer getting their identity from work. They're getting their identity for who they are and what they and what they believe and what they want and, and, and what they want to do rather than what they have to do in order to put bread in their family's mouths. That's a huge transformation and from that, the history yeah. of the world, which James well, Joyce said history is a nightmare of injustice from which we're attempting to awaken. I have to give to you awaken. an opening to talk for the next 30 well, minutes, no, but James nevertheless. James Joyce is the greatest just, reader of the effects of technology on consciousness in the world, I yes, think. He well, was we're great. talking That's about you. Not That's about. who McLuhan really uh, was into, and Bob Dobbs was. He could recite long, out of his head, long passages of Finnegan's mm -hmm. Wake and, uh, you know, and everything. But well, you want to get on to this? We no, can, but we it's can, all relevant. We can make it's a change coming, in this program. It, that's house. coming out. We're talking about Frank and Michael. The artist is coming out. The artists are the intent of the race. They sense things. Bobby Dylan in 1950, 60, 70 was saying, there's something blowing in the wind. There's something going on that doesn't make sense in terms of all your inherited institutions. That metaphor is one that has been carried by the artists and the people who are comprehensively tied in to what's going on, both materialistically and even trying to okay, realm. Talk to the point that I tried to make. Well, the point was, was there, there's a big change I didn't, coming. Yes. And you the said point that I was trying to make was, on that triad of, of major binds of the 20th century, uh, the McLuhan, uh, Fuller, and and Kelso, the one that's moving fastest forward is McLuhan, with the, is the medium is the message, and well, we're changing Kurzweil the medium and, with, and I, yeah. with iPods and yeah. iPads and iPhones yeah. And, yeah. and the personal computers and, and cell phones which have cameras in them, yeah. and, and this little camera here, I know. this little camera here is, 
got a better Take HD. A yeah, it's got a better HD. Take uh, a picture. Well, I'm, I gotta I'm turn posed, the thing on. I, I gotta, gotta get the thing behind okay. my neck to hold my neck in it's place. Got a, do it's I, got a better. Do I have to get a brace up here to hold it like we had to do in Brady's <laughs> days and, and stay there for five minutes to get the. Uh, I'm standing here getting ready. I'm I'm ready for an instantaneous picture, and you're futzing. I'm futzing. Why don't they make okay. these things more user friendly? The whole damn thing more user friendly. What are you doing? Steady Something the right. broke. Oh, it's broke. Oh, there it well, is. And that does. Okay. Okay. There we go. Smile. But I got a better HD camera in here than um, which I'm just doing here on HD. <laughs> Okay. You get I just, it? I just took okay, HD. Okay, send it to him. You're going to yes. send me that picture. I just did HD video, which I is know. better than I know. broadcast video from, from YouTube. From, when we uh, first got up 20 years YouTube. ago, when I got started, that's a much better picture. First, to, when Paula Gloria, God bless her, who's helping in the booth today, got me up on YouTube, being very able to understand the computer way back in 2006, you could put up any length program you wanted to, but it had to be compressed down to a file of 100 megabytes. YouTube is now Google, and they've taken it over, and you can only have 10 minutes. That's because the average time anybody watches anything is two minutes, and also copyright and so forth. But you can have a file 24 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there, we're, and, and, and we and have a capacity be for, well, yeah, they are, and we're going to be swimming in bandwidth before we know it in terms of, and that's a major source of scarcity that has been relevant to the development of all yeah, so information So the productivity technology. of information is moving forward very rapidly, yeah, it, and a democratization, but at the same time, mm -hmm. it's not happening politically. No. And, it's, and especially in this country, and it's not happening economically, it's still, uh, in fact, there's been a, a trend in the wrong direction. I wonder as far if you could talk about that for just a second, because like I said before earlier, I think that we've been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years when the ontology or the reality was changed at the level of capability, and there was something going on about then. Fuller predicted it then that we were transcending. Uh, we are, there are more haves and have-nots for the first time in 200,000 years of human existence, relevant to all the trends. Yeah, but that's if we could. If no, we that's had a at the level of capability. But capability, inherent, that's right. Yeah, but you know that. But not only, reality. No, not reality. Exactly. The reality is you've got a lot of outdated institutions that were formulated within a certain condition, and the new condition is a borning. And it's very hard because everybody's linked into the institutions and the assumptions of the institutions we've inherited out of a situation. It's like the birth into a new reality and so forth. And so we're just coming to that period now. And all those trends that Fuller was predicting was before there was any computers. That's frosting on the cake of what's been going on for a long time. The major question is economics. And you're also getting from a point where somebody's going to be able to do what they want rather than what some power structure insists that they do in order to be an army to go and fight either a war or some other thing that projects the interests of the few that own everything, which has always been the case throughout all of civilized human behavior and probably back into pre-civilization times as well. We're coming into a major period of transformation. The major why, question why is think, economic. Okay, now, why do you think we're coming into a major period of transformation? Well, it's like, but, uh, if you want me to answer it, I do, but you I don't want, want me to deal I'm with it. Ask it, has to do with, it has to do with thermodynamics, as it does in, in, in everything. 30 seconds. Okay. But I dulled the camera, put the camera. Welcome to Conversations. <laughs> today we have a guest host, that's me, Charles Fernandez. Okay. And uh, with me today on Conversations with Harold Hudson Channer is a man who's been. Um, in the forefront of New Age thinking, uh, uh, a proponent of McLuhan, of Buckminster Fuller, of uh, Lewis Kelso in economics, and Ray Kurzweil in futurism. I'd like you to meet our guest today, Harold Channer. That's me, folks. Welcome, welcome. You've probably never seen me before, but that, that's me. That's okay. me. It's so, so good to be on television for a change. Yes. So yeah. tell me, Harold. Yes. Mm. Uh, why do you think this transformation is coming? Well, on? it has to do with photo. Uh, it has to do with thermodynamics only. I mean, all systems move toward chaos. The limits of the system. The physics. Now, what does that mean? Tell me. Explain well, to the, me what the that evolutionary. Means process. We're part of an evolutionary process. I mean, I don't want to go into it. I will, but I don't particularly want to. We're part of an evolutionary process that goes back, well, 13.8 billion years ago, Big Bang. There's some theory of string theory that well, there may be parallel the, universes. The evolution 3. of the last century or so. 3.8 uh, billion years ago. Okay, why, the why don't first you just transformation come to the century, happened Harold. from pre-organic to the organic Harold, process. Harold, this is my show today. 3.8 billion The last billion century. 99.9% .9 of the species that have ever existed on this planet have gone extinct. We are part of an evolutionary process, and it came up uh, through, a, through a process. Not Eight-tenths of it was nothing but bacteria. 
We stayed within the limits 212 and 32 degrees for millions of years in a very unique kind of thing. And so the evolutionary process Harold, got tell started. Me what well, happened that, over the last few years well, since 1970, well, that's just the grounding. last hundred years, that leads you to think that there's, this is a transformative, well, transformative we, period. The Homo sapien appeared out of Australopithecine, Homo habilis, 200,000 200, years, years ago. 200, I know that. We didn't Our know audience that. knows no, that, No, they too. don't. Well, yeah, okay. Your audience 10, is highly literate. generations, our system has been here. Our, our species has been What's here. What's happened over the last 10, hundred years? 10,000 years ago, we started civilization. What's and happened we have over a unique capability years, in the evolutionary process of being able to extend consciousness through tools and technology and make the environment so in a major way other than what is 10 given. 10 years or 100 years or something. Well, you want 10 years, 10, 10 minutes, years. 5 minutes? 10 what? years. Now, 10 years? 20 years. No, I don't, I don't know. I, I would rather go to Why 40. Is this? Okay, I'd rather 40. go to 40 because that's, okay, the, 40. that's going to be seen in the fullness of time as year one. And it's going to be Why? because there were transformative events taking place at the level of ontology or reality. And at one of them on two sides of an equation, one was that the extended consciousness and the inherited institutions were at the hands of political leaders of various tribes or groups who would uh, support uh, people who would make better okay. weapons for so, them. So that's and what it was. What's systems, transformed? Well, I'm trying to get to it, but the well, weapons... Don't tell me what it was. Tell me what's the, happened. I'm talking 40 years. They finally reached the point where we, uh, if you got a Gatling gun, you could beat the people with the muskets. And the ones who had advanced in technology and all that was okay. supported in weapons, they finally got the weapon systems to where, by 19... Unlike as recently as the Fourth the Second World War, when we were trying to kill each other as best we could, the tribes fighting to steal from others and everything, the geopolitical realpolitik uh, got to a point well, we couldn't do it in the second world, but by 1970, apparently, by most of the modeling, you have to get modeling, the weapon systems got to a ma major existentially significant point where if yeah. they're unleashed, it's the end of our entire yeah. species. In the 60s, where oh, there was, let me that? interrupt, in the 60s where there was so called a missile gap in the Kennedy-Nixon election, there really wasn't. The, the missiles were primitive and we weren't going to wipe out the species. But you're saying by 70, that it, we had got, come got forward be, enough where we could do that's that. Where most what's of the transformed that's from where then to now? Of, that's you still have enough weapons that's to do a, the well, same thing. No, that's a question. Some people would say, oh, well, that's, that was in, but everything's okay now. No, we got more weapons now than we did in 1970. Well, they're new and different. We've come down a bit and everything, and there's new wave weapons and things that are there, black ops and but stuff. But still, the we point still have being, five or 10,000 nuclear pattern, weapons, yeah. and so do the, so, yeah, we the know former the, the Soviets. Pattern, the pattern out of all that. You don't argue with Galileo about the orbit pathways of Jupiter. It was that it's not the center of the universe. That's the big pattern. The pattern is we have weapons that if they're unleashed, let four or five uh, atomic-tipped uh, weapons go out of Israel to the capitals of the Arab world, and it's all over. It's all over, not only for them. They don't only take themselves and their enemies down. It would take down the entire species. Couldn't do it in the past. The species survived. Why do you think, We're now why do you think the Israelis would do that? Well, I didn't say anything about Israelis. You just no, did. It wouldn't be... They, well, that was one example. Whatever it would be that could set it off, it would have to it's set off... It's more likely it a would in order for it to be you know, five blocks from here. Well, that's another question. We're going to talk with Ms. Vinsky. That's just the most dangerous because they got such a commitment to an idea in Masada and all that and everything. And the Mossad or, or Hamas? Or Ma no, Masada. you know, the, uh, the, the, the story it's out of the It's not the Israelis who are going to plant the bomb in New York. Well, um, okay, <laughs> never mind. That's a detail. That's a detail. How would we get it? The point being is at a level of capability, they have ability now. We have an ability where we can destroy our entire species. It would be nice okay. to... Okay, so that's has things new. transformed? That's what's new. That's what's new. What's on, transformed? On the adverse side of that, in the yin-yang thing... What's transformed? Well, uh, what's, that is an existential new reality. That is an existential new... That was new, 40 years ago. That was 40 years ago. It's not very long ago in terms of, you know, the evolution. But that is now apparently the case. On the living side of that, we have a technological extension where through time and trends and technology, and that was all before the cyber stuff became effective. Now it's happening. Democratization, as you're saying. We have an Democratization ability... Democratization of media, maybe, but... We have a... We have a some don't, media, don't anyway. get Don't get down some something of specializing on one thing. It's all interconnected. There's no point in talking about a paradigm shift. You have to talk about a paradigm, a paradigm, a paradigm, a paradigm, a paradigm, a paradigm shifts that we're about to go through. What and we're leads going you to through. think that that's going to happen? Well, it's a thing that Where is be, that happening? It's happening right now as we talk. How? 
Well, where? It, on Who, the, what, why, when, and where, Harold? Well, confess. Uh, <laughs> on the on the side of the uh, on the adverse side of the destructive scenario, yin yang, the universe and knowledge and growing, is a capability to provide. A, a, a point that can be made is that through that process of extended consciousness, there was a higher percentage of the world population as you take trends and f availability, new materials, new technologies, new ideas, new understandings, new knowledge that's growing, that there was a higher percentage of the world population who could be seen to be haves in the fullest sense of the word, not just eating, but fullest sense of the word where they could realize their full potential through time. Fuller said it got to about 10 percent in a second. It only happened in the modern experience. It's like the quickening at the end of a pregnancy or a gestation. It got to 10 percent only out of zero, practically throughout most of the time. Got to 20 percent so, by the second. So World examples War. of this, and right? He thing. projected. What? He projected a, 50, a 20 year period of out from 52 to about 1972 said it could be it could be increased and he said he lived out his life and many other people Bookshin and others have said that we crossed the 50 percent mark about the year 1970 the same time the weapons became species lethal for okay. sure so now that's so, an okay, existential Harold. new reality at so the level would this of be an example of what you're talking about the the the, the fact that the, in China with a billion 350 yeah. million people, and India with a billion plus people, mm. uh, there is a growing, a, a growing wealth and a growing middle class and a growing entrepreneurial class. Yeah. And uh, you know that's it's almost a third of the population of humanity is being uh, raised up. Well, there's quite a bit. Where there was like. great poverty just like you said, 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, it was a no, very small upper it's always been middle poverty. class. Yeah, yeah. But, where, but, but in those two places, yeah. there's been a, been yeah, a well, real Yeah, well, that's going revolution. back into the details. Don't but go to the details of details. this country or that thing. That it's not the details. Well, I'm asking you for Look, details of what makes you think the, what, that the, the, that the, the transformation The living is, is in coming. the patterns. You get the patterns. We patterns. can both talk at the same time. You get all you want. You get the pattern. That we're at a period where we were transcending at a level of realistic design and political and social organization that we were transcending. We are transcending what evidence of material that you have? scarcity. There's what a lot evidence of evidence of that for you have? We can take care of everybody. We could not in the past. Everything How can is we take changed care of everybody? Because we have the technologically augmented capability to do so now. And what's we standing in its care. way? Well, it's per, a commitment to outdated institutions that we inherited out of a condition that's been qualitatively transformed at the level of capability, the level of ontology, and it is inconvenient to all the assumptions of all our inherited education, gender, human nature, everything that we've had as far as we were gestating, we're coming like in punctuated equilibrium to a period of qualitative transformation called punctuated equilibrium. We're coming into a new relationship mm -hmm. out of a material understanding of the universe with the uh, with the broader universe, mm -hmm. and it's a time of liberation, okay. fulfilling of the In Sunday's prophecy. Times, there's going to be an article about how a lot of the new media is changing, which is very McGuinness, the medium is the message, the changing the way we, we organize our brains. Everything's and our, changing. And our thought patterns. Everything's out of really date. really look this up. Everything's the, out the, of date. The ability to, that the kids are developing to multitask. I'm duty can, bound in the they fact can, that. I'm hey, well, go on. Let's say that's the end of conversations with But I'm very with interested Fernandez. in trying to keep you scheduled. Now we're going to go back to scheduled. conversations with We're very with interested Hudson in Chatter. keeping you in touch with you because you've so always I'm been very structured <laughs> and you like things structured. And you said before we started that, uh, and uh, I just laid that thing out. It's, hap it's going to be happening in the us. autumn. The big breakthrough is going to be happening in the autumn of this year. We've been wandering 40 years in the wilderness. What, Enough said. What led Enough you said. Think that Never, don't go in into the, the detail. Don't worry. That's it. Now, okay. the thing is, you said that you wanted to do something at 45 minutes. Is I just now 48 did it. minutes into I just did it. the program. The whole thing being that I was going to interview you. Oh, is you. that all? That was the surprise? Yeah, I was going to try oh, to give me a chance you. to get my thing out. Yes. Well, oh, I was well, going to try yeah, to challenge it and make you focus on it in a way that most of your guests don't. Well, do. the major problem, if that's all there is, I thought they had something else. Well, but I was going anyway, to do it a little I, more adroitly, you notice but how I, I tried it's to hard stick to do it with you. Do you know how I tried to stick to structure with you? You're always trying to get everything structured down. When we did the commune, you had it down. We had a chart on the wall. There were all these hippies and poets and whatnot. And he said, from 7.15 to 12.30, <laughs> uh, uh, you that, know, that member only A exists. will cut lettuce. And he would try to get it all Director. down like the arm. He did. It he only so existed in his memory. Memory. Yeah. Right? It, it was. Fantasy. You had it up on the wall in the kitchen. Yes, yeah, so the thing lasted right. a few months. It's an anarchist it's commune. Okay. Communes can, uh, they don't work. Anarchist communes just don't work. Mm -hmm. They never work. What works are 
structured around the leader, or around the central core idea, like mm. like a monastery is a commune around basically well, a, an, an abbot or well, or we're a religious coming to idea. a period of uh, of uh, of qualitative transformation or liberation, and there will be a realization okay. of that. It's going to take a long time well, to build, but to, the understanding. I was on a theme before Harold, uh, yeah. you know, with this th this article in the Sunday Times. Yeah, what is it? Well, now? it's about how More how. You know, the kids playing the video games and, and being able to, by the way, yeah, at the same great. time talk to people all around the world mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. And we've got a language, a worldwide lingua franc, English. Mm -hmm. So I've got young friends, you know, eight and nine year old friends who are playing these games and talking to people, you know, in th on three continents. Yeah, I know it's what wonderful. they're doing up at four o'clock in the morning, I don't know. Yeah. But they're playing these games. Do you like the idea of but, Gaia? But on or? top of all that, they're Twittering yeah. and, and and some people doing hundreds of twitters a day mm -hmm. while they're doing ten other things. Mm -hmm. They're reading and twittering and well, they're not reading and that's one thing that that I got think some reading people. is going to go. We're going multimedia. Everything's yeah. going multimedia. Well, it's all going and that's extension. It's all immediate well, extension gonna, of I'm, consciousness. It's going to be interesting to see uh, the 53rd president of the United States. I haven't been. I lived that long. Mm. Uh, you know what 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 sort of skill sets they're going to have. <coughs> 54th, 10 presidents from now, because they're going to be one of these kids who's growing up with 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 all with iPods and iPads. I think and it's iTunes a question. And, I saw. I saw you know. Isaac Asimov. We did. He, did, he said this is by far, without any question, in the whole history of the evolution of our species. This generation. I think he was talking 75 to, you know, 25, mm -hmm. 2025. This is the singularly significant. Generate a period, generational period in the evolution of consciousness in this universe. I agree with that. We're going to be going through an understanding that's going to make the uh, the. It, it's almost can only be seen in biological terms, and it's not one institution. It's not let's get the ladies liberated, let's get the blacks liberated, let's get justice for the Palestinians, let's get this issue, that what issue. What panels? All issues, all issues. God are help going to us, and I'm an atheist. Uh, all issues are going to have, all institutional assumptions are out of date. And they're what? all something. Who are the Palestinians? And, and at a Harold? practical level, Harold, at a, the, don't don't get in. I'm going to talk with Mizinski next hour. He's an expert on okay. that. We'll talk about that. Well, that, but I'm talking to you about it right now. No, but all of the because, in, can you understand? All of the institutions are out of date, and yes. they're all predicated. One thing they're predicated upon. Let's talk about America. Nearly enough. It's all predicated upon scarcity. That's the context in which all our institutions, notions of human nature, everything evolved. We've transformed that. We've transcended that. We now can apply. So think. A thousand years out, we're not going to be worrying about does somebody have a right to have a piece of bread to eat or something if we survive. But the reason Mr. Asimov, Molly, a major polymath, said that uh, chances are that we're likely to go down the path that we've done where the strong could rule over the weak, always been that way, so that they had the army to go steal the grain from somebody else, make their tribe strong, okay. all of that. How about and a it, conversation, Harold, it, uh, rather than a monologue? Well, okay. Well, you asked me that. But well, but you. It this doesn't is go a, back and forth. It goes to a monologue. Why don't we? Why don't we remember the input that you made now on you, that DVD you did, where you where you said you were small and everything, and Rene Du Bois said that it's part of a larger system. Hundred trillion cells in a human organism. Every cell matters. We got okay. Gaia as a principle for the I'd biological process. I'd like to talk about your support somewhat for the uh, so-called Palestinians. The word well, Palestinian I, itself was the Roman name for Israeli, mm -hmm. for Israel. Was it really? Yeah, yeah that's okay. all it was. Yeah. And and in my reading of history, the original Palestinians mm -hmm. after the Roman period were people like Ben Gurion and and Menachem Begin and Golda Meir. They could call themselves Palestinians. Mm -hmm. That's what they. It was the you know. Shlomo Sands written really interesting yeah. on that. And and who are the who are the the present day Palestinians? Where did they come from? Where was where was Yasser Arafat born? He was an Egyptian. I think he was, yeah. yeah I'm going to re-air. I got to who else? I'm going to re-air. 150 years ago, Mark yeah, Twain went to, went, to, went to Jerusalem yeah, I know, in that yeah. area, and he wrote a very interesting book He about did, that. yeah. Yeah, uh, stories. Yeah. Right? And there was nobody there. It was, uh, the, that area was empty. Mm -hmm. There was four to 6,000 people in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. There was grass growing on the yeah. uh, Via Dolorosa. Yeah, right. Anyway, so. Mm. As the first European Jews started emigrating into 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 Palestine, yeah. and uh, the the uh, Turks, the Ottomans, went went uh, crazy because they were losing control. So they reached out to the, many of their Bosnian allies, who mm -hmm. who in the in the 14th century had sat out the 
Serb Bosnian conflict, mm -hmm. and it become many of them become Muslims, as we well know from the 90s. Mm -hmm. well, and they imp and they offered them land, and they imported quite a number of of Slavs mm -hmm. into that area to counterbalance the uh, the effect of the Jewish migration from Europe into the into into Israel at uh -huh. that time into Palestine, uh -huh. and uh, which is why the Palestinians are not necessarily Arabs because they all intermarried. And oh. They're not because the Arabs have well, know, haven't detail. embraced Why them. is that significant? Well, I'm why gonna, is okay. the I'm going, why, I'm, why is I'm the conflict there. in the Middle East? It's probably the most dangerous place in the world so all of that's going to set off the unleashing of America's weapons systems on the world. So all that's all the problem. That and Kashmir, I think, are the yeah, most Kashmir dangerous. Is, so that's why Kashmir it's interesting. In a little while. Why is it but, interesting? But you've and got, what effects does it have on the larger picture? You've got the major Arab and and Islamic countries surrounding Israel, a really small little country, mm -hmm. and uh, with no huge natural resources, no oil resources, just people resources, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And 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 the you know there was no cry of Palestinian liberation when when the Palestinians on the West Bank were part of Jordan. They didn't call themselves Palestinians. They were they were part of Jordan. It wasn't until till the the 1967 war that when yeah when that Israel, was a big defeat because yeah. they won so overhandedly. So then yeah. you get the right. But that's when the they right. became Palestinians. It wasn't before there was no right. hue and cry for a new state well, or anything. Well, that's when there was some quite, and then you get the same kind of thing where you get uh, the strong get the right to be able to uh, rule over well, the, the other. It's becoming a part. The, it's the, another the, thing. The, the billion the reason people. Is the billion people versus the the, the reason 10 million? is significant is they're going to have to have a system. That so comprehensively appropriate to the evolution of universal consciousness that be liberating of the masses within an ecological context to usher in a new way, but it has to be uh, a caveat. It has to be understood by the leadership of the outdated institutions in a way that they can hold their, that they can be involved in it. They will be anchoring us to history. We have to include them. We can't just have some revolution we overthrow everybody. We're going to have to have that yeah, kind this of country thing. Too. And the country that has to be addressed more than any other is the United States of America. Yeah, now we have a they system. Are, they are of certain that they are legitimate we, in the world. We, you're an American the United too, States right? and the pattern they involve in the world, they do not have a system that the future requires. They have to now, be. We done. have a system. They, our Constitution goes it's back. It's not good enough. Well, it's not it's, good we enough. Have what's it's not called, timely. Somebody's called the frozen republic. Right. And I think That's it goes right. back. Are. Yeah, it goes back to uh, Good the Constitution and the issue of slavery. All right, yeah. And, and we we we, Listen. we codified it so that that uh, a republic, not a democracy, but a republic. Okay. With people. Details. In, You're with talking people details. People in Wyoming having two senators. Yeah. And people in California with 40 times the population. Well, these are some questions. 80 times the population having two senators. Yeah. Well, these. So these you've got are, a Dick Cheney. These are come out of Wyoming. I know. Right. 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 These and, are questions and, and, that confront you know, us. Are part of the news. But one of the things I want to get. That freezes our republic. I want to even get yeah. intelligence chiefs. I know. I like that. And book. EPA people through Congress. Got to get a this. notice in because we're at the end with my good friend. And Charles Fernandez. This is the most amazing <laughs> this is not time the end. to be this is alive. The beginning. This is the beginning of the end. And so uh, we're going to come to a new. No, it's just the end but, of the beginning. All right, never mind. <laughs> but we want to announce, first of all, New Pulse, New York, 19th of July, uh, a memorial service for at Unison. Frank at Unison Center uh, for Frank Patricolo, an artist extraordinaire. On the 17th, the day of this program, as soon as this program ends, get thee to Steve, Pier 81 to greet Reed Stowe after his monumental singular event by an individual taking an initiative uh, returning after 1,552 days on the oceans of the world, setting a world record. Those two events we want to let you know. Thanks for viewing. Thanks for How coming do I do, in, Harold? Charles. Thanks for Did coming Did I upset in. you enough? Not at all. There's no upset. Damn. It's just we got a lot of challenge in front of us, and yeah. I hope we don't well, join Well, you need entropy. to be challenged. Well, okay, I'd be challenged. I mean, you've got, you've got